Hey guys, it's Daniel with Pwn CNC, and we're here to install the bracketing system onto a Belt Z. Um, this is usually comes with a uh, the older Shapoko 3s. Um, I've got a modified version here, and it actually came with my Z Plus. So uh, I've got an older carriage that I've taken off, uh, since upgraded another machine, and I had it spare, so I went ahead and held it around so I can do stuff like this, these videos. So the Belt Z, of course, has a Z drive that's dri uh, driven by the belt. So what you're going to have in your package, and if, I'm assuming you've already looked at the preparation section, so you know all the little pieces and that sort of thing, so I won't go into full detail there. But we're going to start with basically this big U-shape uh, piece here. Uh, this is actually going to sit right here on the front. Your, this is an early prototype for me, since again, I don't use this machine, but this little hole right here is actually down here, so you can access the uh, screws for your Z uh, homing switch. But this is gonna mount right onto here like this, and we're gonna basically take these uh, socket head screws. Those are gonna pass right through the plastic here and extend out and go through this metal plate into the uh, standoffs here. Now, since, uh, again, this is an older machine and I've since uh, gotten rid of my original screws, so I've just got the uh, two, two of the screws up here that came with the uh, kit, as well as two additional screws here, which we'll use in the bottom section, uh, bottom, uh, these two bottom holes for right here. You'll notice that I've already placed the M5 nuts. Um, the machine, um, the socket head screws should sit flush on the fronts, which means this is the front side, usually the textured side, I believe. Um, but the whenever you put the socket head screws in, it should be flush and those should be facing towards you. Um, when you do it that way, there are four M5 screws um, here. The nylon should be on the inside or towards the back side of the machine. If we flip this around, you'll also see there's uh, four more locking uh, M5 locking nut screws here. Those are also, the nylon is pointing towards the back of the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that up here. Now, um, you can do it a couple different ways. You can either mount this first and then put the brackets on or the brackets and then mount the whole thing. We'll go with the brackets first, simply because these uh, M5 screws are kind of, uh, nuts are kind of wiggling on me. So I'm gonna kind of hold those in place, tip it up like this, The grab one of the aluminum track brackets and one of the M5 by 20 millimeter uh, button head screws. Make sure these holes are on the outside. So this is gonna be right here. And we're not gonna use these, uh, these two here, uh, these two M5 nuts. We're actually gonna use the ones on the back side because we want the screw and the nut to sandwich um, the plastic and the, uh, the track here so that it holds it uh, nice and sturdy and in place. You will need, uh, looks like a M3 hex driver here. And let me get this one started. Then we'll jump over and get the other one in there. And then we can tighten them down. Now we can go ahead and put these down to final torque. That's not a problem. The side here should be pretty flush, so you may need to adjust it just before you tighten it down fully, because um, it should be nice and uh, even on both sides. So that way the track is pointed straight down instead of off at an angle. There it goes. All right, looks like my hex driver is getting a little old. Um, all right, let's jump in and put the other track on there. Now on this side, again the track, the holes are on the outside. And on this one, we're gonna use the upper right hole, which goes through to the back side locking nut, and then on this side, the bottom, oop, bottom left. Here, I'll give you a better view here in a second. Get these started so they don't fall out on me. All right, there we go. Now, I will hold this in place and kind of keep that flush in between my fingers here. Make some adjustments before I put that down to final torque. All right, we're good to go. We now have a much longer U-shaped piece. This is basically gonna sit right in here. So I'm gonna remove all of the screws here and I'm gonna drop a couple of the 
these upper screws, these upper socket head screws through the plastic there towards the top. There it goes. Then we're going to take the metal plate and kind of stick it right in here. So it's just going to sit right on there. This is going to provide some stability and some structural integrity to this system. So we're going to take that plastic, just run it. Uh, the tracks will cradle the uh, router mount. And in this case, we're going to take a four millimeter hex driver. We're going to put these socket head screws, thread these right into those space, those aluminum spacers. Now, before I get too far, I'm going to go ahead and drop the, uh, the other two socket head screws that came in the kit and get those in there. And then we're free to, uh, Tighten these down to final torque. Goes. Now, you'll notice that the tracks should be um, parallel. Uh, so, the, so the router mount should be able to freely move up and down without making contact with either of the track brackets. So once that's in place, let me push this back a little, we'll turn our attention over to our um, support arms. So each support arm, there's two, uh, these are the upper parts of the arm. There's one side's textured and one side's sort of matte or flat, uh, smooth surfacing. We're gonna put the textures on the outside. So the texture, these, this piece right here sits right down into the track and the uh, the piece that goes in there helps the track from uh, its side to side motion, right? So here's the horizontal tracks that provide. Um, this is what's going to hold on to the boot. Um, so when you slide the boot into place, or from the back or the front, um, you're going to hold. It's going to slide right into these tracks, which are on attached to the uh, to the track brackets. So I'm going to take take the horizontal track, the foot. Um, and I'm going to press that right onto, so this ankle here will basically have a bolt in there. Um, sometimes it's useful to uh, put it down on a flat surface so that this is nice and flat as you're putting it together. The screw goes in um, from this side here, and then a M5 locking nut kind of drops down into the plastic there. Hold that in place. Grab your four millimeter hex driver and just kind of tighten that down. Now, before you go down to final torque, um, we want to tighten up just a little bit. Make sure it's on that flat surface. We don't want that um, bending or cock, you know, going cockeyed on us um, as we're tightening this down. And sometimes I'll put this down on a flat surface where I can access the, the hex piece there on the side. And now we have got a nice flat, flush surface there. Let's uh, repeat that for the other side. Just kind of put that into, join that ankle piece there. Drop the screw in. Grab the M5 nut. Push that in, kind of hold it there as we tighten it down. Now there shouldn't be any kind of gap or anything like that. And if you see it, um, I see it on mine. I just need to press it in. Now I can set this on a flat surface, kind of gently tap it, even with a uh, light rubber mallet, not very diff not very hard at all. Uh, just be careful, you don't want this, this thing cracking on you. But I'm gonna put that down on my flat surface. I'm gonna tighten this down to final torque. There we go. So now I have two arms. On this particular carriage, the L goes backwards. So we're going to take um, one of our thumb screws, drop that into place, um, take one of our track nuts. I'm going to hold it from the back side as I push the thumb screw through and make contact and start twisting onto it. Now there's a lot of twist there. There's many millimeters of, uh, of, of grip there so that you don't accidentally uh, have, the, have anything fall apart on you, right? So we're going to grab here. Send it, uh, hold this back on the back side. Send the, uh, the thumb screw right through into the uh, track nut. Tighten that down. Now we are all set.
The key uh, simple thing is just make sure these are at the same level. Kind of use these holes as a uh, nice holder or a thought process as far as, you know, I tighten this one down to the second hole or I guess this third hole up. I'll tighten this other side to the third hole up also and then insert my uh, machine, my boot. Now, you can um, run a uh, metal file on the inside of those, um, those L-shaped pieces there. Um, this is one of my older designs, but that piece that goes inside of the track, you can do a metal file right here and right here if you find that these are way too stiff um, in order to move them up and down. They are expected to be stiff at first uh, because as you use it, um, that will become easier. If you notice, I've been using this, uh, these arms for a while, so they move pretty freely. Yours eventually will. Um, it may not at first, so don't don't be alarmed if that's if that's kind of stuff. Just use that file, and that'll make it a you know speed it up. But there you go. You've got your bracketing all installed. This will uh, these bracketing. This is a Z independent bracketing system by Pwn CNC. This will work with V2, V3, and V4. Um, any of our Z independent boot um, uh, dust boots for your uh, Shapoko 3 with the belt Z. And yeah, this is Daniel. Um, remember, don't just own your CNC, dominate it.